Hi everybody, Jacob Breed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the 2024 Microeconomics Exam. This is set one, question number two. In order to do well on this question, you should be through unit six. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. Now this question is all about good X. Good X is produced in a perfectly competitive market and we have a graph provided. For part A, we have to identify the equilibrium price and quantity. If we take a look at this graph, we can see that good X produces a positive externality. That's because the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal private benefit. In order to find the equilibrium price and quantity, we need to remember that the marginal private cost is the supply for the product, and the marginal private benefit is the demand for the product. We can find the equilibrium point at the intersection between those two curves, move over to the axes, and find the equilibrium price and quantity. Simply identify them, the price is $15, and the quantity is $300. And if you do that, you get your point. For part B, we have to calculate the deadweight loss at equilibrium and show our work. In order to find the deadweight loss triangle, we are going to find the marginal cost of the market quantity, the marginal benefit of the market quantity, and the marginal benefit equals marginal cost point. And of course, we are looking at the social benefit and cost here. So at our quantity of 300, we have that point being our true marginal cost. Up above, we have our true marginal benefit and our marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost point there. Those are the three points of our dead weight loss triangle. We're gonna take the base times the height times a half to find the area of that triangle. The base is from 300 to 400. The height is from 25 to 15. Plug in all those numbers and do the math. 400 minus 300 times $25 minus $15 times one half equals $500. And if you have that work, you get your point. For part C, we are told that the government wants to eliminate the deadweight loss. And we are asked if a per unit tax to consumers or a per unit subsidy to consumers will work. And we have to explain. It's helpful to remember that a per unit tax to consumers will shift the marginal private benefit to the left and a subsidy to consumers will shift the marginal private benefit to the right. And we should also know that the allocatively efficient or socially optimal quantity will be found at the intersection between the marginal social benefit and marginal social cost. That's 400 units. And that means we want to increase production in the market to eliminate that deadweight loss. And that leads us to our answer here, per unit subsidy, because it will raise the marginal private benefit to the marginal social benefit, bringing the equilibrium quantity to the socially optimal quantity of 400. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your next point. For part E double I, we are asked what the value of the per unit tax will have to be in order to eliminate the deadweight loss. That per unit subsidy will need to be equal to the marginal external cost. And you can find that marginal external cost with the gap between the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit. And since these two curves are parallel, you can find it at any quantity, but I'm going to find it at 400 units. That means $20 minus $10 is $10 for that per unit subsidy. Simply identify it, $10 and you get your next point. For part D, we are asked if instead of a per unit subsidy, if a price ceiling of $10 will achieve the socially optimal outcome, and we have to explain. In order to answer this question, let's just check the graph. Let's add in that price ceiling of $10. Remember that the marginal private cost is the supply curve, the marginal private benefit is the demand curve, which means 200 units will be the quantity supplied with the price ceiling, and 400 units will be the quantity demanded. But it is the lower of the two quantities that will actually be bought and sold because consumers can't buy more than producers are willing to make with the price ceiling. And as we already saw at 300, we have that area of deadweight loss. With 200 units produced, we have an even larger triangle of deadweight loss. And that's because we are further from the allocatively efficient quantity of 400 units. So based on all that, our answer is no, because it will decrease the quantity exchanged from 300 to 200 and increase the deadweight loss as it is further from the socially optimal quantity of 400 units. And if you have an answer something like that, you get your next point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2024 microeconomics exam, question number two, set one. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.